Scoop Jackson, welcome to the show. And hey, appreciate it. Thanks for, being, thanks for having me here. Oh, it's my, honor. it's an honor for us. Mm -hmm. Tyler Kleeman, thanks for co-hosting the show. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate oh. it. Well, Scoop, I was wondering if you could give us some practical insight to the whole business side of things. Mm -hmm. And in particular, you know, one of the things that I think about often, I think our viewers think about, is when a marquee player is up and it's contract time. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this a little bit in the green room earlier, right. you know. But, you know, if you could just give some commentary about what's going through that player's mind. Is it all about the money, money, money? Is it about where does his wife and kids want to be? Do they want to be near the grandparents? I mean, right. well, what's it? I mean, they're human beings, right? So, yeah, but then that's the thing about they are human beings. And, and with that being said, everybody's situation is different. There's no one particular rule of thumb that's followed mm -hmm. when it comes to signing a contract or entering free agency. You know, I think for the most part, depending on what team a certain player is with and what relationship they have with that team, Everybody wants to see what their value is. Yeah, of course. That's the human aspect mm. of this. So when you see players like wanting to test the free agent market, that doesn't necessarily mean they want to leave. But they only know they got one or two chances in their professional lives to find out what their worth is. Yeah. And I think all yeah. of us have that. You know, we all totally. don't have that opportunity. Yeah. To find out, to test the free market, to see what our value really yeah. is. Yeah. I think all of us, from a work standpoint, whatever it is that we do, yeah. it'd be nice to find out, you know, because if you're working at your job for 10 years, I'm working wherever for 15, 20 years, whatever, it'd be nice if we get a break. How much am I really worth? Sure. Not that you want to leave, but let me yeah. find out. That's right. Let me see, you know, what what my value is. That's right. If I'm being undervalued here, you know, if I'm getting underpaid here, am I getting overpaid? Let me find out. And with professional athletes, I think all of them at some point in time like to at least find out mm. what their value is. Because you can't rely on the media to tell you that. Of course. You can't rely on other people's maximum contracts to tell you what your value is. You have to go out and speak to GMs. You have to speak to owners. You have yeah. to speak to coaches to find out, all right, I may be worth you know, five years, 125 to you, but I may be worth six and 130 to them. Yeah. You know, and what else comes with that? Yeah. You know, so the, the the school districts have a lot to do with it. The wives have a lot to do with it. Weather has a lot to do with it. Yep. Money has a lot to do with it. Yep. You know, what my situation is going to be with this organization mm. has a lot to What's do with it. What's my role, you know? Here's the deal. Let's, yeah. take, it, let, let's take Dwayne Wade, mm. for example. Yeah. Dwayne Wade has the benefit that he has that, that a lot of people don't look at, not him specifically, but athletes, is let's go to Miami. OK, Miami is a town that is not necessarily a sports town, but it's still there. You know, they have the Dolphins. That's cool. They, 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 a little bit of basketball, you know, with Timmy Hardaway and Lonzo one yeah. did. They, 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 yeah. they created some type of staple there. They did. Miami was like fresh meat to a person like Dwayne Wade. He's mm. like, you know what? I could probably go to other bigger markets and do other things and probably maybe make some more money. But guess what? They don't have a basketball identity. there. Mm. If I win in Miami. If I set the stage for Miami, I'm king there for the rest of my life yep. because I can go down there. I'm and the turnaround guy, right? But I'm there. I'm good for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, Wade, I'm, I'm there for the rest of my life. Yeah. Wade County, right? That's what they call it, right? Wade County. That's what I'm saying. Wade so, County. Yeah. Wade so County. That's right. It's not about him like getting the most money. Yeah. And it's like I'm good for the rest of my life there, and he yeah. wound up winning there. Yeah. It's his yeah, place. Yeah. LeBron came down there, came and left. Dwayne's yeah. like, I'm good because this is still yeah. mine. So. It's like short money looking at long money. Yeah, yeah. In Dwayne Wade's case, he would be a fool to go anywhere else because for the rest of his life, he could do whatever he wants to. Absolutely. It's like Mike Dickin mm -hmm. here in Chicago. That's I'm right. good here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Dwayne, all going. he will have, he can have television. He can, for the rest of his life, everything he wants a man. Oh, he's free. He's king of the South Car Beach. dealerships, totally. everything. Mm -hmm. Hotel, he could do anything there. Absolutely. And those are the little things that you look at when it comes to contract situations. Yeah. It's yeah. like... Do I really want to leave this? That's right. You know what I'm saying? Do I really want to leave this situation? Yeah. Yes, I could probably go somewhere else and make more money and do, but long money, yeah. I'm good here. Yeah. And I right. don't want to leave this. Yeah. This is working for me. It's very well stated. I'm fine. Very well stated. Peyton Manning was in a situation where he was under contract for the owner to have to spend another $26 million with the risk of him not playing. Mm -hmm. Now, Peyton Manning's situation is very much like Dwayne Wade. I got this town. Yes. This is Peyton Town. This yeah. is I got no in, question. I'm done. I'm I'm good here. Yeah. Anything I want for the rest of my life is all mine. Yeah. I know Bobby and I used to run things in Indiana yeah. and Larry Bird and all that. No. This has become yeah, no my question. city. 
But you have an owner that paid you $24 million and you didn't play. You sat on that. He has to make a decision. Yep. Not knowing what the outcome is going to be. That's right. And I got the number one pick. Do I risk another? Do I pay another $26 million? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's $50 million you're spending with not without knowing what you. So his situation was different. That's right. So the owner's like, Peyton, I know this is your town, but I, I can't. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't. I can't write another. I can't write another twenty-six million dollars check without getting anything in return. Yeah. yeah. And Peyton's like, you know what? I get that, and you got the first pick. It's time for me to leave. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's time for me to leave and go do my thing. It's probably sensible for everyone. Right. So yeah. you get the difference. How is not a one answer yeah. to that yeah. question because yeah. we could pull every athlete You're right. You're and right. find different situations. Yeah. And Peyton mm-hmm. Manning's positioned himself where he can always go back to Indianapolis. For sure. sure. Of course. Always. Yeah. And still do <clears throat> the stuff to Dwayne where he can still run that town. Absolutely. Nobody's coming in and taking his place no. yet. So no. I say that to say everybody's situation when he enters free agency yeah. is different. And there's a lot of other variables and components yeah. that go into yeah. this that athletes have to think of. So it's, it's, it's not monolithic. Yeah, it's not monolithic. That's good. That's good. You know, and, and and we have to understand. And sometimes I get mad because writers we don't do this in the media, and not just writers, but also you know anchors and 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 and, and figureheads, and and people that speak yeah. about sports for a living. We don't necessarily look at everything that needs to be taken into consideration yeah. with the athletes. And to be honest with you, it's not the athlete's responsibility to tell us yeah. all because there's some personal stuff that Absolutely. goes into these decisions. That's right. You know, and nobody's they invading like your personal their personal space. And it's not it's not even protecting mm. it's like you don't have a right to know. That's right. Yeah, exactly. You know, just like if, if we're in court, there's something's gonna stay in the judge's chambers and something's gonna come out of court. Right. That's right. You know, and we need Bingo. to respect that. And we the media don't have a tendency to do that. We yeah. need to know all right. So we attach everything to money. Yeah. So when the athlete's making a decision we don't look at all the variables. We that's say, oh, right. all they offer is money, the money, the money. Right, right, and that's right. not necessarily true. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't take that in consideration. Yes, the money does have a lot to do with it, and yeah. they're in the business of money. Sure. You know, but we in the media need to understand that, look, this is show business. 5% show, <clears throat> 95% business. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Skip, I want to ask you about your writing skills in a minute. Just before I do, I did want to ask you this, though. Mm-hmm. When a marquee player is going through that change, that decision, testing their value and stuff, What's the process? I mean, does the agent call and line up meetings with owners and GMs? They do their own little road show? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, can, yeah. can give us a little... Play well, it depends, it, 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 one, it depends on the athlete. The two, two, depends on the sport. Mm-hmm. And three, depends on the team that has the money to get the athlete. Sure. So some teams are banked out. Yeah. You know, and that's the agent's job. To create a short list or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, all right, man, here's the mm-hmm. thing. This team, this team, and this team want you. Yeah. This team, this team, and this team can't afford you. Yeah. You know, this team is willing to give up this for you. Yeah. You know, so they lay it all out, and that's where that that's where that ten percent comes in because they do the grunt work. Yeah. And you sit down and trust them. Now they an athlete may have in mind, look, I want to go here. It's impossible for you to go there because they have this player signed this contract. They have this. They're already over the salary cap doing this. In order for this to make this happen. We, they have to do this. Now, here's where the agent comes in mind. This is in all sports. Agents have clients, and they have relationships with general managers sure. all across the board that they're able to make things happen that we, on the outside, yeah. don't see. Yeah, that's right. So, if so-and-so's client is Robinson Cano, and they're trying to move Josh Hamilton, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They try and, to, and, and the money won't work, but parts. the same mm. agent represents both of them, yeah. and they have a relationship yeah. with so and so, you know, with, with yeah. whoever, yeah, you know, with with with, with Nolan Ryan in with Nolan Ryan in Texas, yeah, right, because they've made deals with them before, of course. Mm. That's All right, I mean. where nobody can see this happening, right. let's find a way that I can make this happen because mm. I already have a relationship with them. I can I can restructure everybody's yeah. situation to make yeah. that happen. Yeah. And if we can bring another team in here, make a three team deal, yeah. there's a way to make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. So all yeah. that goes into play when you're dealing with this, but we don't tend to do this because we're short sighted. Yeah. We don't think of all the ways and all the components that could go in making a deal happen and all the relationship building <laughs> that goes in with that. So all this I say is brought to the table. Yeah, that's right. You know, so it's not ever as simple as that, all right, here's here's the one line. You know, there's a lot of yeah, roles right. to get to this one point. Yeah. And an agent's job is to present that to his client at all times. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of behind the scenes and a lot of good old boy it's, networking. It, it's and, in there. It works. You know, it's it works. like everything else in life, really. Look, how know? the hell did Kevin For Garnett sure. wind up in Boston? Yeah. 
Yeah. That was uh, had it, just what you described is how it happened. Yeah, who, who, I'm sure that's who, how it happened. Right? It was all engineered behind the scenes. Hey, look, Kevin McHale, mm-hmm. Danny Ainge played Kevin Ainge. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ainge, Ainge, Ainge was, Ainge, I mean, uh, <coughs> McHale was yep. in Minnesota. Ainge is in Boston. Hey, man. <coughs> let's, let's get do this done. Let's, let's get, get it done. Cool. And there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, there's it's, nothing it's, wrong it's, with it. Dude. That's the way it's supposed to go. That's, that's how it goes. Is, that's the way it's supposed to go. Totally. They got you a championship totally. out of it. They did. I love that. So. that is, they, they, they wound up doing it. You know, so I mean, we, those things play a role. Yeah. You know, and agents, no agents. You know, let's work this out. You know, let's make this happen. It's good for my client, good for your client. See if we can make this happen. GMs, no GMs. You know, very rarely do you get a situation where players orchestrate their movement. Yeah. And yeah. that's what made a lot of people so upset about LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and yeah, his yeah, Bosch Gordon, right. because we rarely see that. Right. Especially black athletes. That's yeah. not seen. So the media and the public got, oh, that shouldn't be doing Hell, it goes on all the time. Yeah. It just don't go on with players. Yeah. So players exercising their and, power like that is very rare. And Boston started mm-hmm. that trend, I think. You know, they're one but, of the teams that started that trend. But <clears> the players <throat> didn't orchestrate that. Right. See, it's, it's the players yeah. that orchestrated Wade it. was kind of the brains behind that. Wade was behind it. And that, they're, not, they're not players in the minds of the public and the media should not yeah. have that type of power. Yeah. If I'm D Wade, yeah. I'm doing the same thing, though. So yeah. I can't yeah. I can't believe it. You have to exercise your power. That's a Dwayne. This is like he said, look, Pat Riley, he's doing the thing, but this is still, I'm, I'm just as. This is mine too. I have an investment right. in this too. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and once again, I hate to keep bringing Kevin Garnett back up in this conversation. Let's not think that Kevin Garnett going back to Minnesota is just about playing basketball. Sure. That's no. about him getting back into the foundation sure. of ownership. Oh, absolutely. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Did he come out and say that he's going to get into uh, I, don't, I, I didn't hear if he I did say that, but I'm pretty that. sure that's true. Yeah, yeah. But that you can't be mad at that. Yeah. It's a power, no. it's a power move. It that's has right. to be. And that's absolutely. the business side of this game that's that right. people tend not to look at. And but we have this stigma that athletes, you know, that athletes should not be able to get involved in the business side because it hasn't been done. <clears throat> this is a new day, man. That's right. The athletes have to evolve beyond just playing a sport. And when they tend to do it, we need to accept that. Especially black athletes. You know, I'm all about that. You know, yeah. getting our foot in the right. game, you know, so Major stuff, yeah. Because <clears throat> it's it's so rare to see us in this. So yeah. uh, you know, I I'm 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 liking the fact that we're in a position at a state and in an era right now where we're not just pawns. Yeah. So, you know, um, yes, there are a lot of business moves, a lot of, you know, old boy network that's still alive and, yeah. and breathing very well in sports. Yeah. And that, that's going to be a part of it. Yeah. But, you know, if, if there's certain changes that can be involved where players have a stronger role. Mm. And, you know, even other agents and other GMs, you yeah. know, have a stronger role in making moves where it's just not, you know, boom, 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 you're going to do yeah. this. I, I think mm. it's all for the better for widening up what goes on in sports across the board. Dude, that, that, that's awesome insight. You know, my, my viewers are going to love that. Tyler, mm-hmm. do you have a comment and, on that? Yeah, I just wanted to add, I mean, they've mm. got a life to live after basketball Absolutely. or after whatever like, sport they no play. No question. I mean, 35, pushing 40, I mean, you're done. Right. So they got to think about their future, what's gonna, what's the rest of their life going to look like. They don't want to just sit around. And mm. I mean, even if you do make a whole lot of money playing ball or whatever, you don't want to just sit around for the rest of your life. You want to keep doing things. You so. want to exercise. We're, we're in an era of branding now, you know, and the thing about it no is question. that when you see athletes branding themselves so early <clears> and, and being able to take advantage of their brand, their brand has to extend beyond what they do on the court. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. absolutely. You know, so you can't expect the athletes to be 35 and then be like, oh, my brand is done. Mm. You know, I have to extend this brand. Right. You know, and, and I hate to say it, man, you know, also I, inside of being in an era of branding, we're also in an era of small business. We're also in an era of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So these athletes have to find something to do that extends their That's brand right. mm-hmm. in an entrepreneurial nature. That's exactly right. All their whole lives, they've worked for somebody. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for Hard. them to put themselves in this off, right, put the themselves in this to have some control mm-hmm. of what happens on the post, you know, Post athletic side of their career, yeah. you you have to allow that to happen for them. That's mm-hmm. right. You know that's exactly right. We're not used to that though. This is the first generation that's really gotten <clears throat> into that. Mm-hmm. You know, where you see a Mario Lemieux and a Michael Jordan actually, and, and a Magic Johnson and and and, and, a, and a, uh, a Nolan Ryan, yeah, grabbing some position of and a Wayne Huge. Gretzky grabbing some position yeah. of power outside of what they're doing and using yeah. their brands right to position themselves in some place mm-hmm. of ownership, totally, but yeah. still be involved in sports. You can't expect that to stop. It has to grow. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It has to grow. And with that, all sports grows. Mm. You know, no, I, so I think it's very important. And, and I agree with you. And we need to start looking at it that way. I'm sorry, I mean, yeah. to cut you off. No, you're we, good. Need, you're good. we need as a public and as, as a media base, need to start looking at that. Mm-hmm. So we need to stop writing these cats off I agree and with thinking you. that, you know, hell, once your career is over, the only thing left for you to do is come work at ESPN. No, it has to be beyond that. You know, I, 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 I want to tell you, point, I, I'm actually wanting to say how much I appreciate it because. Your your point about and we will get to writing. That's going to be my favorite question. Okay. Um, but I want to say that your comment about living in an age where the athletes have to think about 
their post-athletic career in the context of entrepreneurialism and all things internet and all things media is very, I mean, it used to be, okay, Fran Tarkenton, you know, from he, he became a brilliant, you know, businessman. Yeah. Gary Fensick, you know, my friend Gary Fensick mm-hmm. became a, a brilliant investment banker. But, mm-hmm. you know, there were, back then, there was only a handful of guys like that. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. these guys are getting smart and they're using their savvy to yeah. create. Well, you look at Alan, Alan Page who played it. for the Bears. He wound up being, mm-hmm. a, I think, I think a circuit court judge or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you look at Dave Bing who wound up running a car dealership and running, running for mayor <clears throat> of Detroit. Exactly. You know, you look at, you know, the post-athletic career of a few individuals. And it was far and few, you know, few and far between when you had them doing something of relevance outside of sports. That's right. But you have to think that that's going to evolve and it's not going to stay the same. Yeah. You know, so now we're seeing it more often. Yeah, absolutely. You right. know, and 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 my problem is not with that. My problem is with the general public not opening their arms up to that. Yeah. That look, y'all are athletes. Y'all need to just stay right here. Stay in sure. this little box. Stay in this box. Right. Right. All you yeah. got to do right. We want you to stay in your place. Do this thing. All you know is sports. Stay right there. Do your thing. And that's it. And that's fine if you can play sports until you're 70. Yeah. yeah but exactly. you can't. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You can't. That's a great point. Yeah. You know, so from 35 mm. on, if you ask the average person, if you couldn't do what you wanted to do after 35, what, the re- what are you doing with the rest of your life? <laughs> totally. You know, so a lot of people don't get established until they're around that age. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah, exactly. that's right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's so, right. so then I'm, it, the, the train stops there. I mean, that's not. No, that's, that's not, not fair. No, right? no, no, no. You have to give them time to go. That's brilliant insight. Yeah, yeah you really can't. You have to give them time insight. to do. And then I like yeah. the fact that a lot of athletes are starting to think that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm going to talk to you about your writing style. Okay. Scoop, if you don't mind, I've been salivating to talk to you about it because mm-hmm. I'm an author myself. Yes, sir. And I really appreciate your writing style. I want to just mention. Um, I saw your piece, I think it might have been Wednesday of this week, and I'm not sure which day it was, I think it was Wednesday in ESPN, mm-hmm. when it was it was your first written work after Derek Ro- after the announcement of Derek right. Rose's right. Uh, you know, surgery and mm-hmm. stuff. And I, I want to just maybe step away from just Derek Rose for a moment, although I, my heart goes out to him right. tremendously, mm-hmm. and his family and everything, and mm-hmm. Chicago fans and all that stuff, because I think he's a real stand-up person. Yeah. With, good character and all that kind of stuff. But I want to look at your writing style for a moment. That mm-hmm. piece alone, you had three segments with a dictionary definition. Right. I took some notes here. I think one of them was coincidence. Yeah, right. And then you had the segment of that. Coincidence, bad, bad luck, luck, and Murphy's Law. And Murphy's Law. And right. it, dude, it was brilliant. The word count, I did a word count, I forgot what it was. It was 850 something. 850 something, 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 something like that. Right where you want it, right? Right, right, exactly. And I, because I, you know, eight, 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 nine hundred words, you gotta get it right. Bingo, and you, and you package it up in a way that I don't even care if you're a sports fan or not. You're gonna read that thing, and you're gonna go, this is brilliant. Dude, where well, does that come from? Okay, here's the deal. That's one of the things, and I'll take you through the process of it. You know, uh, we didn't decide to write until, like, I think I talked to the editor, Keith, uh, around, the news came out around 10 o'clock that he was injured. I think 11 o'clock, I reached out to Keith and was like, hey, you know, you good or you need anything on this? He hit me back about midnight. Yeah, what's your, you know, what you, you know, with Kane going down also, it's like, yeah, you know. Right. What you got? You mm-hmm. think we could do both of these? And it's funny because you asked that, and I hate to give you a long answer. The week before, I sent an email out to the editors wanting to look at what Derrick Rowe, and Derrick Rowe said he missed practice. And he gave a speech about that. That was the exact same day that Jonathan Taze went off on the team, mm-hmm. blasted the team right. in the locker room. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do a column on leadership. Like both two leaders, leaders of the Bulls, leader of the Hawks, basically dealing with two different aspects yeah, of leadership. Big issues. Big issues. Yeah. One one speaking on leadership publicly, like, look, I'm manning up, I'm owning this, yes. there it grows. Yeah. And then Jonathan Tays, from a leadership standpoint, going in on his team and looking yeah. at the two that didn't fly. That, that would be a good story. That didn't fly. Apparently, but right. that idea sparked them <clears throat> to say, here's a Hawks Bull story that we can do that's happening at the same time. Uh, okay. So Keith hit me back at my midnight, look, let's do the Hulk, the Bulls Hawk story now. Okay. Because now we have a storyline we can run with. Yeah. So, okay. So at midnight, that's when you start crafting the story. Yeah. Yeah. And in crafting the story, <clears throat> in my mind, what I tend to do is I try to read what's already being written. And with and, and it's, we're living in an age right now where it's not we have to wait to the next day yeah. for the news to oh, be yeah. released. The, yeah. the internet it's has provided us yeah. with instantaneousness yeah. that has to come in the form of storytelling. Absolutely. So at midnight, two ESPN writers had already written about it. John Greenberg, I think, had written about it, and somebody else had written about it. And then you look at the NBA 
uh, uh, broadcast is on ESPN, they're already talking about it. I think the Bleacher Report has already written about it, and, and Fox had already talked about it. You turn on the radio, which I did, and the score is already dealing with it. So my job as a writer is to try to say something that's not already being said. Mm. I just in print. But not repeat what's being said on radio. You know, I don't want to repeat everything that John Hood's saying. Of course. You know, I don't want to repeat what Lawrence Holmes is saying. Absolutely. You know, I don't want to repeat what Sylvie and Yurko and Waddle yeah, are saying in absolutely. the morning. You know what I'm saying? You don't. So you have to fourth. I can't. I can't write with John Greenberg because John already did his thing. Sure. He, he nailed that already. Yeah. So my thing is that's the research that has to be done. You know, you have to read and find out what's all being said. You know, around it, and you start crafting a story around it. And when you start crafting a story. You want to, me personally, you want to tap into something bigger. I've had the advantage of never th- being small-minded in thinking as far as my writing is concerned. You ask about my writing style, I've always tried to think about what everybody else is thinking as opposed to what my opinion sure. on the situation is. Mm-hmm. So when you're looking at this particular situation with Derrick Rose and you're looking at um, 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 Kane. Kane. Kane, Patrick, I'm about to say John thinking. You're yeah. looking at Patrick Kane go down at the same time the first thing that comes to my mind is, when the hell does this happen? Yeah. <laughs> how do you lose mm. two? Oh. And if, how does this happen to a city right. in a span of two hours? Oh, yeah. So right. what comes to mind is, it, is this a coincidence? Yes. So I look yeah. at the definition of coincidence. What yeah. is a coincidence? It's, yeah. it's a rare occurrence that happens. All right, cool. I said, nah, this shit is bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is bad luck. <laughs> Same too. Right, right, right. <laughs> I was like, this, this, this is bad luck. So mm. I write bad luck down. And then I'm like, you know what, you know, and then I, the line came to my head is that Cleveland, you know, they always sit there and I always hear people, oh, we're bad love, we're cursed. Like, Cleveland, yeah. you're not cursed. Right, right. You're not cursed, you know. And I'm like, this is a curse. I said, but this is like Murphy's Law. It's like, you can't even script this happening exactly. to any city. So no. I wrote those three things down. I had no idea where I was going to place them in the story. Hmm. Story was written. And those three, was, I did not incorporate them in the story. Oh, that's interesting. And I'm like, all right, do I end it? Do I, how do I... Do, do I go to the point where I say, this is why I ask the question to the reader? Sure. You know, I ask the question to the reader, like, yeah. look, is this coincidence? Is this bad luck? Is this emergency luck? What's the best way to put this in the story? It's done. Can it be a payoff? The bottom paragraph is it. And because at the time when I took those ideas, I wrote the definitions down. Yeah. I go back and look once again at what's written. I said, well, nobody has structured it like this. Right. Nobody. And. I'm at the word kind of want to go. I don't want to overwrite the story. Sure, I want course. to make sure I get my points across strong. Yes. This would be better because from a creative standpoint, now I'm giving you something to read that's just not linear. Oh, absolutely. I'm breaking it up. So that's yeah. when I say, you know what? I'll go one, one, and one. Now, what order do I put it in? I put it in the same order. Coincidence is not as strong as bad luck. Bad luck is not as strong as Murphy's Law. Yeah. How does it hit? Mm. Soft jab, yeah. right cross, knockout. Oh, so you it. put them in that, you know, mm. you, you put them in that order. And it. that's... How it all came about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't just like I had this in mind. It worked itself into how do I include this in the stories on the back end? And it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes you have a structure, but sure. you know, they were like file whenever you get through. Yeah. So I had the editors waiting up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're waiting. So yeah. I started really writing at about one in the morning. And I finished like at three thirty. That was mm. gonna be my next question. Yeah, in, it, did, it, did, it, it took about three mm. hours to get it in and yeah. get it crafted. Yeah, you finish writing in a couple of hours, but crafting it takes cool. time. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's what takes time. Well, it's that, like how does yeah how how do we make mm. this the best? You know, yeah. I got it. I got to tell you, man. And I mean this this bump. Thank Thematically, you. it was brilliant. Thank you. Uh, anatomically, it was brilliant. And the payoff and the clothes was fabulous. Okay, anatomic. So I, I, okay, well, you know what? <laughs> like we might see that on Force take break. on Monday, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Tell the world out there, Craig exactly. Clayman had a little bit of an influence <laughs> on Scoop Jackson. No, I thought it was a brilliant No, because you experience. break things down mm-hmm. anatomically. You do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're absolutely right. Well, th- you know what? This has been a great show. I think this has been one of the best shows we've produced at oh, Craig Clayman TV. I want to say thank you to Scoop. No Tyler, problem. you probably want to say thank you to Scoop before we close. Yeah, man, like thanks so much for coming, man. It's been a pleasure. No problem, man. It's an honor. Thank you for having me. It's nice to get your input and uh, get the inside scoop if you will on, that's uh, right man. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if it's inside it's just you know Martha, you try to get a little bit inside there's a lot of other people that are a lot of closer to the situation I got my editors out there we might thumbnail this and title this you know the scoop from scoop or something like that <laughs> you gotta come anyway. something more clever than that cool man All right. <laughs> actually we'll call you for the title right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah listen well this has been a great show and I just want to say thank you again to you guys and I also want to say in a heartfelt way scoop thanks for taking the time to be with us my name is Craig Kleeman and on behalf of Tyler Kleeman, my co-host, Scoop Jackson, our guest. I want to say peace. Cheers. We are out.